All thanks and praises go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His mercy, His blessings, and we beg for His forgiveness. I testify to the absolute fact that there is no deity, no one worthy of any deification except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for He is indeed alone and has no partners. On whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can He destroy. On whomsoever He left astray, none can provide guidance to. 
And I further attest to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last and final messenger. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالِمِينَ He was sent as a mercy, as a compassion, as a benefactor, as an intercessor to all of creation في يوم القيامة. يا كتب المسلمين يا عباد الله قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسول والكتاب الذي نزل على رسول والكتاب الذي أنزل من قبل ومن يكفر بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر my dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, an invasion is taking place. An invasion that's backed by the mightiest empire. There is turmoil in the land of Yemen. There are missiles that is launched from different nations. They are attacked to annihilate the people. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about 50 days before the birth of the greatest creation, Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm talking about this mighty military might that coming to destroy not Aqsa but Makkah. I'm talking about the first battle, the way it began. The first battle began by fake news, the battle of battle. Let me remind you, there's not much change with the wickedness of mankind. The first battle was based upon economic premise. That when Muhammad sallallahu for 13 years of persecution in Mecca, when he left and he went to Medina, this kalima to la ilaha illallah was bad for capitalism. It was bad for business. Because Muhammad is going to Medina and telling the world that you should preach, you should believe in one God, not the 365 gods that is in the, 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 the haram. So it was bad for business. Business was being taken away from Mecca, from the Quraysh. And we see then and now, you don't mess with the dollar sign. You don't mess with the numbers. It's all about the bottom line. It's about economic power. The second reason for the first battle was pride. Pride in that they believe in many gods and they don't want to leave that many gods to believe in. It's kalima to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. The third premise of the first battle was fake news. That Abu Sufyan coming with his caravan and when he is coming to Medina to Mecca, he sends his servant to the Quraysh, the elitists, and tell them that only not only Muhammad وسلم, is telling us to believe in one God, not only that he ripped us from our pride, that our sons proclaim this kalima to la ilaha, Musabi Umir, all the young men that came and say kalima to la ilaha and went with him that destroyed our pride. Now he's affecting our business. That he's plundering our caravan. Abu Jahal says, I will give 700 camels. I will give all my wealth and my power to defeat this man Muhammad because of this kalima to the Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this mighty ruler that was coming from Yemen to destroy the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there was a holocaust before the holocaust that we know about. The first holocaust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms in that Quran al-Kareem, the burning of the Christians, Ashab al Because they refused the religion of the state, the religion of Dunawas, the Aksumite king of Yemen at that time. So he forced them to denounce their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or take the faith of the state or you be burned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us 
about the Ashab al ukhdud the companion of the ditch. This fierce, brutal persecution that was taking place in Yemen on the Christians by Dunawas, this acts to my king, then persecution of burning where one of the professors says two times a baby speak. Two times a baby speak, and we know the baby that speak from the cradle. There was another time that the baby speak, when the mother was reluctant to go into the fire, and the baby says, Ya Ummi, don't be afraid. Just go into the fire, walk into the fire. As if we've seen this today, the young children is standing up in Gaza and saying, why my dad is leaving me, but I believe in Allah. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The baby speaks. One of the Christian men escaped and went to the Roman Empire to tell them about what's happening in Yemen. The Roman Empire sent a message to an Najashi, the king of Ethiopia, who is the grandfather of the king that Rasulullah will meet. This was before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu this was 50 days before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu This surah, the surah to feel is a surah of comfort to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And it's a surah of comfort to us that some of the scholars said this is the time to reset, re read the surah as much as you can. Study the surah as much as you can. And this surah is a warning to the oppressors. This surah is a warning to the aggressors. This surah is a warning to the dictators. This surah is a warning to the elite power of the world that we see today. That this man went to the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire sent a message to Najashi to send an army to defeat Dunawas. Abraham al Ashram was one of the generals that went there, defeated the king of Yemen. He died by drowning. There's two kings that died by drowning, Pharaoh and Dunawas. After he defeated the king and he came into power, he wants to distract the business center, which is the hub of Mecca, by doing something in Yemen in order to bring the business into Yemen. So he built Al Qulais. Al Qulais, and he built it in honor of the Najashi, the king of Abyssinia. But the secret was to make the business hub Yemen and not Mecca. So when the Quraysh found out about this, some of the Quraysh from Banu Kinana, one of the tribesmen came and he desecrated the building. He desecrated the building, probably break a few boards, de defecate in the building. So Abraham Ashram said that this is evidence. This is reason enough to go and destroy Makkah. Go and destroy collectively killing. Abraham Leshra, backed by the Roman Empire, backed by the Byzantine Empire, that so much so that they sent 12 elephants. Elephants, the tank of, of those days, Arabs never seen elephants, elephants of Africa and India. It's coming to this, this destroy this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah 40 years after this, giving comfort to Rasulullah, saying to Rasulullah, Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. Alam tara. Did you see? And Allah is using the present tense and saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, didn't you see, Ya Rasulullah? Did Rasulullah saw this? He didn't. He wasn't born yet when this incident happened. He was born 50 days after this invasion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah, and he's saying to Rasulullah personally, and he's talking to Rasulullah first. He's the audience first, and then the Quraysh, and then all of us. Didn't you see Alam Tara? Didn't you see Alam Tara Kaifa? How Kaifa? Every single word of this 23 word of five ayah have profound 
implications of what's happening today. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving comfort to Rasulullah and warning to those. That did you see, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Alam tara kaifa? How? Now what I did with them? Kaifa begins to open an a, 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 a imagery. Uh, it's very graphic. What is about to happen, every single word has profound implication. That not what I did with them, how descriptive. Who has had with me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, interesting, He didn't say, you know, amal, fa'ala. He says, you know, amal is when we do something. You have to do an action. Now, amal takes effort. Amal sometimes have no intent. You don't, you do things without any intent. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka. Fa'ala, that he have done this without any effort. It is of no effort to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he used fa'ala. And what he says next, has this matter that's happening in Gaza is an aqidah matter. It is what is different about this compared to what happened in Syria, what happened in Afghanistan, what happened in Iraq. This is an aqidah matter. This is why you see this awakening of this ummah to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why is this an aqidah matter? Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Rabbuka." Alam tara kifa faala Rabbuka. That ya Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'm not saying Allah. I'm not saying Samir, I, I'm saying Rabbu. Rabbuka, as if Rabbu is to carry this cap, which is Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this is not about this house of Allah here, this haram. This is not about Quraysh, Ya Rasulullah. This is all about you, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is all about you, that I'm protecting this house, not because of Quraysh, there's 360 idols as we speak in this house. That is why the next surah, this surah is what? It dealing with political issue. It's all about the politics of the day. The next surah is dealing with what? what the economics. Li Quraysh, about the trading. The next surah is dealing with what? The social malay of the society. Profound implication of these three surahs. You cannot talk about feel and not talk about Quraysh and Ma'oon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbuka. And he puts Rasulullah before Ashab al -Fi. He says, the reason I'm protecting this house from this mighty empire, from this Roman-backed empire, the most powerful name, military might at that time, I'm protecting this house because this house will be the house this is the city of you, Muhammad, this Bala. This is the city, Ya Rasulullah, where Ibrahim says, Rabbij al hadha baladan amina warzuk ahlu min al thamarat man amana minhu billahi wal yawm al akhir. This is the city of Tawheed. This is the city of this Kalimatullah ilayhi Allah. This is why I'm protecting. I'm not protecting because of Quraysh. I'm not protecting it. I can destroy this mighty empire before they left Roman, the Roman Empire to come to Abyssinia, to come to Mecca. I can destroy them at any stage. I am protecting this house because this is your birthplace. This is where you were born. This, Ya Rasulullah, is where I will join this two masjid. Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram. This is why I'm protecting this house, Ya Rasulullah. Rabbuka, Ya Rasulullah. I am the Lord of this house. That this is why I'm protecting this house. That I will bring you from this mosque to the farthest mosque of Al-Aqsa. And by default, if I'm protecting this house, then I will protect the house that is connected to this house, which is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Alam tara kaifa, fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. Subhanallah. Allah repeats this word again. Alam. Didn't you see? Didn't you see? And this is to all of us. This is to those tyrants. This is to the leaders of the Muslim nation. 
This is those who betray this ummah. This is those who betray this ummah, who are in alliance with those who subjugate our brothers and sisters. This is to them that Allah doesn't need you. Allah doesn't need a leader to come forward with his army. Allah doesn't need any leader. You are two billion on this planet right now. Two billion. <coughs> Wealth is not a problem. We have, we are the dominant shareholder of wealth on this planet. What is not a problem? Numbers is not a problem. With all your wealth, poor ummah, take a drop of water to that crying child in Gaza. Take a drop of water. Allah wants to show us our power is not in our number. Our power is not in your wealth. Our power is in our Iman. Our power is in our Taqwa. It's a waking up call that Allah is using. I was saying to my daughter yesterday while driving her to school. I said to her, Allah had to use the people of Gaza to teach the world a lesson. Allah had to use people with Iman. Allah would not use us in America. Allah would not use us in different Muslim nations. Allah will use the people with the highest Iman that when they're losing their children and they're saying Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. When they're losing their children, when that man Abraham is trying to escort that nurse that you see that she spoke in CNN, she said that that man was concerned about where she will get the next drop of water and how quickly they can get her to the border to escape from this bomb. And she says that this is the love, this is the quality of these people, that he, while he's taking me to the border, the Rafa border, he's saying that I just lost my child, I just lost my brother, but I want to get you water. Where? I will make a phone call to see who has power, where we can get you a drop of water. You know what she said to the world? She said, when Anderson Cooper asked her, would you want to go back to Gaza? She said, in a drop of a dime, she will go back to Gaza. Allah had to use them to show this world that your power is not in your number. Your power is not in your wealth. Your power is in this kalimatullah illa in Allah. This trust in Allah. This conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we are seeing the definition of Quran in front of our eyes. That's why we're seeing American women, white Caucasian women with tattoo and nose ring, is putting on a hijab and saying, I love this Quran. I'm reciting this Quran word for word on the social media. I'm joined with 5,000 people who never recite this Quran to recite this Quran word for word together when the social media take them off. Because when they come to the ayah of Surah Yusuf, when they say that Jezebel, Seduce Yusuf. They said this is a hate crime, so they cut her off. La hawla la quwwata illa billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. My dear beloved brothers and sisters, I was just telling my daughter on my way here, if I only can get 15 minutes to this 30 minutes of khutbah, it will be more beneficial. But time is against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Alam tara tayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi sabil feel. Alam yaj'al. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he had left Abraham Ashram to go to the Roman Empire to talk to them, to get their enforcement, to get their support, to get their military, to get the elephants from Africa into Mecca, to do all of this, to come and go to the people of Taif and get and meet this man, this traitor, Abu Bigala, who we see that. He was a traitor. He set out. He take up. He said, "No problem. I will take you right into Mecca." All of that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could have stopped them at any point of this planet. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "No, I didn't stop them." This word yajal. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "I didn't stop them. I didn't stop them, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam." I'm sorry. I never give a khutbah from the phone. But this planning was under this Ummah Rasulullah in 1917. In 1917, when the European League come together, 
and they decide they will give Palestine to the United Kingdom. How they will divvy up the Ottoman Empire. We will give Palestine to the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom says we will give Palestine to the Zionists. We will make that an official homeland. In 1942, my dear brothers and sisters, right in New York City, the U.S. Zionists came together at the Biltmore Hotel. You can Google this. This is from the United Nations. You can Google this. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left them, not for one year or two years. This is in the planning for 75 years. They went to the Biltmore Hotel and they declare in New York City that Palestine will be the commonwealth of the Jewish nation. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we see that in 1948, when the United Nations sent a mediator for peace, his name was Pope Baltimore. Jr. You can Google. This is all information. This is factual information to make peace. They assassinated him, the peacemaker in Israel. We see in 1948 what happened. You hear that here. We see in May of 1948 the Declaration of Independence of the Israeli state. We see in 1950 Tel Aviv became the capital of Israel. We see in 2008, which will bring us to the last seal on Gaza, a total seal of Gaza, where they begin to label this invasion. What the, 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 the cast led, meaning going in there for 22 days, 22 days, it's been over a month now, of complete massacre. We see again, they label it, cast led. They label it what the pillar, the pillar, and we're going with these names they have, now they label it the war. What's the definition of war? The definition of war, if you look at the Marion Webster Dictionary, seven days ago they upgrade this, they, they re, redo this definition, seven days ago. A war is two nations. A war is two or more nation that has arms, weapons. This has not been happening from October 7th. This has been happening over 75 years. This was inevitable. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us. And he's saying, Alam yaj'al kayyahum fi That I waited and they planned and they bring all their might. And we see the corporate power. And we see that the, 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 these, the, the, the nations, that all of them is an alliance. And they come together with all the power to destroy 2,300,000 people without any water to drink. Without any water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That he takes this kaida. This kaida is a hidden plan. This kaida is a plan that they're saying it's because of this attack, because of this religion that Abraham Ashram was saying this was the Christian nation against the pagan nation. The Dunawas was saying this is against the state, the Jewish state against the Christian state. They use religion as now they're using religion. But there is a hidden agenda. Whether it is the Aqaba Pass to cut, cut the Aqaba Pass to make it to take away the revenue from Egypt, which is $9 billion. You can go into all these theory, whether it's the oil field that already been secured in Yemen, whether it's the oil to go into that port of Gaza. You can think about all these scenarios. There is a hidden agenda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this kaida is a hidden plan. This kaida is strictly a hidden military plan. But it's interesting. The plan of Abraham was open. He came with his elephant in a plain open day. He came with 60,000 army to destroy 10,000 people. Just like you see this overwhelming force. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I have to cut the khutbah because cut the surah because of time. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us he used what? He used the birds. You know, it's, it's interesting. This surah is very interesting, rhythmically, phonically. The last word of each ayah is what? Feel. Tadheel. Ababil. Sijil. And suddenly, the last ayah is not written like anymore. If you only look at the last word of this, of this five ayah, it can give you the entire narrative of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he used the birds, ababil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam yarao ila toyri musakaratin fi jawi samari ma yu yuzkuhunna ila Allah. The birds he used. Are we looking for birds to help us today? Birds is not going to help us. What is the weapon of today? It's not the birds. Maybe the closest that come to birds is Twitter. That word, information. Information is power. Information is the bird of today. Social media is what changing the narrative of the traditional media. That the power is not in the corporate world anymore. The power is not in the politician. The power is with you and me and our young folks. The power is in that Christian child in Alabama who is saying that this Quran is power. The power is in that Jewish man in New York City who is standing up who is children of the Holocaust and say this is an injustice. Is the power of God Mate, the foremost authority on juvenile delinquents in Toronto, Canada, who is a child from the Holocaust, that saying that I visited Gaza before this and I came back, he's an expert on trauma. And he said when I came back, I sit in my office and cry for days. This is the power that we're seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy is with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate our brothers and sisters in Philistine. Allah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huwa al-lazhi la ilaha illa huwa al-malik al-Quddus. As-salamu al-mu'min al-muhimin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbar. Subhanallah, subhanallah, amma yishnikumun. Allahumma kunni akhwanina fi Filistin Allahumma kunni akhwanina fi Filistin Allahumma kunnahum mu'awwilan wa zahira Allahumma kunni ikhwanina murabitin fi masjid al-Aqsa Allahumma kurrij hammahum Allahumma nsuruhum Allahumma nafsi karubahum Allahumma dami jar jarhahum Arhamar rahimim Allahumma isa al-Islam wal-Muslimin Allahumma isa al-Islam wal-Muslimin Wa idhinka shirka wal-Mushrikin Wa dhammir aadad din Huwa al-lazhi la ilaha illa huwa al-Malik al-Quddus السلام المؤمن المحمد العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله يما يشكون Let's make the dua of the king of Jerusalem Let's make the dua of Da'ud alayhi salam when he was faced with Ayah What did Da'ud say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Da'ud gave his hands to Allah and he says ربنا ربنا فرد علينا صبرا Oh Allah inscribe in our heart صبر وثبت أقدامنا and put our feet firm, our gazan, our brothers and sisters, our fathers, our mother, keep their feet firm in the akhidah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One surah ala al-qawm al-kafirin. And grant victory of this ummah over those who cover the truth. Grant victory. Let's make the dua of Luke alayhi salam. What did Luke alayhi salam say? Luke alayhi salam says, Rabbin surni ala al-qawm al-mufsideen. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bring help to those who are causing mischief in this land. Let's make the dua of the sleeper of the cave. These young men who stood up against the status quo of society. Let's join with the young people in, in the social media and across the world and make the dua. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hayyilana min amrina rashada. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray today on this blessed day of Jum'ah. 
We pray that you accept our dua. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray that you liberate our brothers and stop the next tribe or child in Gaza. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray that you make haq prevail. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray that you bring the people, like when you open Mecca, when you say, and the people came in droves to proclaim this kalima. This is what we're seeing. For the first time we're seeing people by the millions is coming to proclaim this kalima to la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine and all parts of the world where there's suffrage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. My brothers, can you squeeze as much as possible? It's cold outside. I don't care how much Mm-hmm. 